Welcome to The Golden Shadow, the podcast about psychology, philosophy, myth, mysticism, and mystery. In this podcast, we explore the unseen, the unknown, the great beyond, what is beneath the surface of human experience, and how we can make contact with this dark side in a safe and secure manner. My name is Arne Rogerson. And I'm Melissa Politi. Today, we're talking about individuation. This is a Jungian term. We can define this very briefly and over simply as the process of becoming an individual, uh, the lifelong endeavor of becoming who you are. Alyssa, what do we mean by this? Well, as we begin to dig into this incredibly deep uh, theory of, of Jungian thought, we, we start to really explore um, the great work of an individual's life. Mm -hmm. And, and as we start to approach this entity, we, we begin to dig in and understand that in many ways we are born with a purpose. We're born to realize some greater aspects of our being and individuation wraps up this great work into that kind of package of an individual really attempting to understand and develop their innate potentials, the varying levels of their own psychology and work towards integrating those pieces towards a, a greater wholeness. So there's some notion in individuation of our self in some sense, having multiple pieces mm. or realms Yeah, in some sense that may be disconnected from each other. Yeah. These sort of seemingly disparate parts of, of our own experience of our own psychology. That is, a natural process, I think, of us just developing as an individual. Um, as we become more conscious and more aware, we start to understand our place in the world in relation to our parents, our family, society, our own um, individual ideal ideals. All of these things start to come together and kind of cause these experiences where you kind of morph into different versions of yourself. Like, who are you at home? Who are you with your friends? Who are you at work? Who's the person you want to be? They're all you at the center, but there's this varying difference between them all. Right. Part of our process of maturation and entering into the world as a quote unquote adult involves us taking on certain personalities mm, in some sense and certainly. leaving others behind perhaps yeah. that might mean leaving the child behind yeah. in order to become the adult mm -hmm. it might mean leaving the artist behind mm. to become the office worker mm. or there's all kinds of ways you could phrase this in some sense of needing to adapt to your situ situation yes. in perhaps yes. in inorganic or abrupt way yeah. and you become fractured yes yes definitely uh, that happens in ways that are kind of natural just for development and at the same time they happen in less natural ways which cause more of those traumatic splittings of of the psyche right so that's what we talked about last week was, yeah. was trauma yes. the idea of uh being exposed to overwhelming stress yes either if it's acutely um or over time mm -hmm. can lead to a sort of fracturing of self a disconnection yes. from self yeah and so the process of individu of individuation is definitely tied up with the concept of the shadow. Yes. The idea that there is um, ego consciousness, mm. the, the part of self that is the I, mm -hmm. the autobiographical, yeah. um, the one that weaves the narrative, yeah. the one that's kind of awake, whatever you per are perceiving yeah. now as waking experience, it's sort of the ego. Yeah, it's our main awareness. But that's not all of us. No. There's something below the surface. There's a lot below the surface. Yes. It's not just one thing. <laughs> it's not just a dichotomy of yeah. conscious and unconscious. Not really because the unconscious is so vast and there's so many different realms. Um and so we have this idea of the shadow, of mm. trying to come in contact with what is unseen, mm. what is unknown, what is beyond us, what is below the surface. Um, and so all of these episodes are in some sense tapping into this idea. Certainly. And, um, so this idea of the golden shadow, of, of, of um, confronting the shadow, um, engaging with the shadow and trying to integrate it mm -hmm. in some sense is trying to become a more complete person yeah because you know um i think the actual reality of not doing that work is to live in a fractured manner that we either um 
pretend or we, we sort of uh, naively move through life thinking that everything that is obvious to us that's in ego consciousness, that's in our awareness is, is everything that's important and all the parts that we're made up of. Um, and I think as we explored in the previous episodes of the unconscious realm, there's so much more going on and really starting to dig into that work and understand and work towards integration is what really helps you have a much better sense of, of your true um, essence at the core. So we have a quote from Yun. If you can bring that up, I think it's a good a good quote to yes. start a larger conversation about this. Yes. So this is from Collected Works, Volume 8, The Structure and Dynamics of the Psyche. And it goes as such. But again and again, I note that the individuation process is confused with the coming of the ego into consciousness and that the ego is in consequence identified with the self, which naturally produces a hopeless conceptual muddle. Individuation is then nothing but ego-centeredness and auto-eroticism. But the self comprises infinitely more than a mere ego. It is as much one's self and all other selves as the ego. Individuation does not shut one out from the world, but gathers the world to oneself. So that's a good quote. I think there's a lot in there that's pretty spot on mm. for what we're trying to convey is we're very egocentric. And we yeah. overemphasize the ego. We over-identify with the ego. Yeah. And uh, this is prevalent in each individual, but it's also prevalent in our culture. Mm. And um, there is this illusion that we have that the ego is all of us. Right. I am me, obviously. And when you say, do you know who you are? Mm -hmm. You say, of course I do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sitting right here. Of course I know who I am. Right. And um, that, in some sense, is the ego convincing itself, maintaining this narrative, this kind of coherent right, narrative right, right. that I am in control. Right. I know who I am. Yeah. I know where I am. And I know what I'm doing. Right. It's maintaining homeostasis. So it's we can understand why the ego does this. It's uh, by, by its nature, by its function and how it works well is to do that. But the process of individuation really actually teaches us that the ego can begin to sort of stretch and morph and learn um, how it exists in relation to the unconscious. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't dissolve the ego so that it no longer exists. In fact, it strengthens the ego. It, it sort of uh, it spurs the ego into transformation. And that's what really starts to get the individuation process going. And, and it allows you to sort of step into this new... Uh, viewpoint coming from a much more balanced place. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of the struggle. Is uh, the the quote says that um, the ego coming into existence, um, we're convinced that, that is the process of individuation. Right. Becoming the individual, to me, is just becoming the ego. Right. Right. And that's how it feels. <laughs> Right, and, and the ego is so tied up into other usually pretty obvious things. Um, a lot of our connections to like the outer world mm -hmm. and the things that define us that might be incredibly surface level, might be more materialistic, mm -hmm. just more shallow in general. And so that identification with ego consciousness can put us into this really sort of negative pathological cycle. Definitely. And that's, that's why people generally speaking, really don't like the idea that they're not in touch with themselves. Yeah. They don't like the idea that they're not in control. Right. They don't like the idea that they lack free will mm. in some regard. Mm. But part of the individuation process is sort of embracing that mm. notion that if you say to someone, you're out of touch with yourself, you're disconnected from yourself, yeah. or even something stronger, you don't know who you are. Right. People don't respond to that very positively. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> but in some sense, you're someone saying that they're talking to the ego mm -hmm. and saying, Hey mm -hmm. ego, you are not everything. Yeah. There's this whole side of you that's unconscious that you might not be in touch with and your behavior might evoke this, that you actually are not in touch with what's underneath the surface yeah. and you're actually denying it. And this causes a lot of problems in relationships, mm. especially a lot of romantic relationships. I think yeah. there's, there's problems with someone who refuses to admit that they're, is something they're not in touch with. Right. That their behavior 
uh, the actions they're taking are avoidant mm. or passive aggressive, resentful. Mm. Um, and, you know, the partner or a friend or anyone might just say, you know, you're behaving in a way that is different than what you're saying. Yeah. And the, all they're trying to point out is that your ego is convinced that you are in control. Right. But there's this whole other side of you that you're ignoring. Mm. And so this over over identification with the ego is not individuation. Certainly not. <laughs> the the idea of be who you are and like do your thing. Right. Like this individualism of just kind of like just like, you know, just be yourself and like yeah, do, do your thing. Do like you. you do you, have it your way. Um <laughs> A lot of that, we, we think that means, okay, yeah, like become, we become the individual. Like that's who I am. Right. But that's a misconception is that the process of individuation and becoming an individual is actually getting in touch with that, that is below the surface. Yeah. We, we need to sort of transcend maybe the, the shallow ideas of like doing you and go a little bit deeper, maybe even scale back into our ancestral lineage. And it's more like know thyself, truly dig in. It's not obvious, you know, when, when, when one begins the individuation process and it's just confirming Everything you think you know about yourself and everyone else, it's that's usually kind of a telltale sign that you're possibly looking at this through uh, a limited lens. Mm -hmm. um, and it's time to really expand um, how you're approaching it. Right, right. So this concept, as you said, this is a, a getting in touch with the true self or even the idea of there being a, a true self or a whole self mm. um, that you are incomplete, that you are fractured right. or that you are lacking awareness. Mm -hmm. um, this is a concept that's been around for thousands of years. It's been discussed for thousands of years. Yeah. And yeah. in, uh, you know, in Buddhism um, there is this notion of the illusion of self. Right. Um, a lot of the, uh, the practices of Buddhism are trying to get in touch with these insights, this mm -hmm. truth yeah. that the idea of self is in some sense, um, illusory mm. and mindfulness techniques are in some sense trying to dissolve that idea of self and yeah. become um, submerge yourself into a more unconscious state and become interconnected with all things and yeah. that's yeah. that's tying into this notion of the ego right um, the ego is an illusion yeah it's not all of you yeah it's part of you it shouldn't be denied um, but it's not all of you yeah. If we even look at it from like the yogic perspective, like the act of walking the the path of yoga, which by the way is so much more than just the physical postures of asana, mm -hmm. is to come into union, is to yoke with God or with the higher principle, with the deeper self, with mm -hmm. the things that we sort of really discover when we dive into the more religious and spiritual realm. And that right. inherently gives you a perspective outside of your own sort of limited individual um, egoic ideal. It really mm -hmm. um, expands you into a much greater sort of cosmic significance. Right, right. So mysticism yeah. as, as a practice, and this is a very diverse, widespread practice in mm -hmm. all kinds of different religions and cultures, but mysticism, this idea of um, getting in touch with the the all or the mm. one or yeah. God yeah. or the beyond, mm. um, disillusion of self, um, non-duality, um, interconnectedness, mm. feelings of deep, um, links between all things right. and that you are not just you, you are everything yes, and everything yeah. is you. Yes, yeah. All of this is, you know, we, we can't encapsulate this <laughs> yeah. obviously in like in one, in one idea, this yeah. is the same, a much, much, much bigger, bigger idea, but still this is all tapping into some, some kind of, um, realm of letting go of the ego as mm. being who you are yeah. and embracing that there's more of you mm. that is deeper, that is older, more primordial, yeah. um, that is more in union with everything. Yeah. Um, and more closer to the person that you're meant to be Certainly. or, or the real version of you. Yeah. Um, and Socrates, um, the ancient Greeks, you know, they, they're coming up with, again, this is like 2,500 years ago, so yeah. a very long time ago, but they're coming up with this uh, notion of wisdom. Mm. Um, Socrates is saying, know thyself. Yeah. And this is this concept. And if, you know, 
if you say to someone who's very egoic, like, know thyself, the ego responds, I do. Yeah. <laughs> of course I do. I'm me. Yeah. I'm here right now. Of course I know who yeah. I am. And, but that's like, that's not what Socrates means. Yeah. It doesn't mean like, are you awake? Mm. Literally? Like, are mm. you awake right now? He's like, no. He's like, get in touch with who you really are. Yeah. Find out who you are. That yeah. is the, the path of wisdom. That is the struggle. Mm. Um, in life is to understand who you are yeah and we recognize this concept sometimes Mm -hmm. of getting in touch with who you are yeah and other times we don't yeah and it's hard to sort of make sense of this concept because there's such an overemphasis in our culture often of the ego right um so this know thyself notion is really uh what we're trying to get at yeah, you, you might say that in our more modern culture, we're putting a lot of emphasis and a lot of cultivation on ego consciousness. And um, with that as the main focus, one is able to accomplish so much, yet at the same time, there is an inherent disconnection that can certainly arise, which might be at, at the core really something that's driving a lot of uh, sense of meaninglessness or detachment or um, like something's missing. There's like a void. And, and when we really look at how one can approach this work, we have to understand that the ways in which, you know, the ideals and the things that we have prioritized, um, at least in modern culture, are maybe in it of itself needing refinement. And when we approach this from the Jungian perspective... You know, we don't look at the ego as something to destroy or to get rid of, um, to want to put aside. In fact, we understand the importance of it, what it does to create the sense of cohesion, to allow ourselves to have the the continuing sort of um, uh, the, the royal eye that is always there. Mm. And yet that doesn't mean that you can't really question why the eye feels the way that it does or why it thinks the things that it does. It um, You can really start to... Um, kind of morph the experience and the relationship to ego when you open yourself up to all the other parts of your being that are sort of just yearning to come into consciousness. So people are born, they're thrown into the world, and as they get older, as, you know, early years, four, five, six, the ego starts to develop. Mm-hmm. Consciousness starts to develop. Yeah. There starts to be a, a an, an idea of self. Yeah. That I am a thing. Right. And I am distinguished from the rest of the world. Yeah. And we see this happen. And um, this is part of the struggle of being young, mm. I think, is um, reckoning the development of consciousness <laughs> yeah. with who you really are. Mm. And we know that young people struggle in a big way to figure out who they are. Yeah. And that's a, that's a, a, a really a core aspect of teenage years, twenties. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's your entire life, but especially uh, teenage years and, and in your twenties, yes. people are very much trying to figure out who they are. Yeah. Um, and this, the struggle is something that, we're all faced with and we approach it in ways that can be effective mm. and we can approach it in ways that are very ineffective. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a lifelong process, but you, you can, we know that there are people who are in their old age and they still don't know who they are. Yeah. And that's, that's one of these struggles about being young. Um, and one of the adventures of, of, of being young and, and individuation is speaking to this, um, this struggle, this adventure mm. of finding out, who's the real you. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the most meaningful things that you can do. Yeah. Is, and this is where people derive probably the majority of their meaning in their life mm-hmm. is, is this pursuit of becoming them, their true self, right. of finding out who they really are. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's the hero's journey. Right. Right. So the hero's journey dramatizes this, right? Mythologizes this. Yeah. Often it's, it's very much like a pretty clear, like individuation path Mm -hmm. that one is taking the hero coming into contact with some sort of major struggle and working through all of these dynamics where they're truly having to redefine who they were because whoever they were at the beginning of that story, you know, that limitation is completely like blasted apart 
Right. And it's time to start reframing, restructuring, going into the underworld, seeing what you're there, fighting the beasts, you know, coming back up, you know, wounded and yet at the same time, you know, three times more wise. Um, it's this mm-hmm. whole process that we um, should also be walking. And yet for many, they might not ever sort of be forced onto that path. And that's part of it, right? Is if you're not forced onto, if you're not forced to individuate, mm-hmm. usually you won't. Right? Yeah. Right? Well, so yeah, like struggle, really, challenge yeah. shapes you yeah. in some sense or yeah. forces you to become a person, forces you to become an adult. Right. And if you're not faced with any struggle or challenge, yeah. you won't individuate. Yeah. I think honestly, there's like a natural principle that wants the individual to to walk the path of individuation, to find wholeness, to know themselves better. But with an overemphasis on, you know, ego consciousness, with maybe the loss of more introspective uh, or spiritual or religious principles in our culture, we're, 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 I think, at an even higher disadvantage from seeing the signs of individuation happening. And I guess that's the point I want to make is like, someone could never walk the path of individuation, but they might be like, an anxious wreck their whole life mm. or have this sense of disconnection or mm. depression, like existential depression, the, the, dar- the darkness inside of themselves that just doesn't make any sense. That to me is like total, um, just like openings, doorways of, of, of individuation, just kind of beckoning you to come closer. What's going on here? Why do I feel this way? And if one doesn't approach that then they'll just keep passing on by and live you know maybe a somewhat fulfilled life but at the same time maybe never be fully realized right so this is part of the difficulty of um the individuation process is it's um it's hard yeah and it's scary (laughs) and that's like the the challenge part aspect of it the struggle aspect of it i mean that the hero's journey again mythologizes this is like the hero the hero embarks upon a journey and it's compelling because it's difficult yeah and if if the journey is is portrayed as being easy if the hero doesn't have to struggle yeah we don't like the story (laughs) and if the if the hero somehow goes from being sheltered a sheltered child to Mm. being like this great cosmic warrior yeah. without struggling right. in some way we don't believe it yeah we don't like that it's like well that's <laughs> that's i just don't find this character believable right. it's like it's kind of stupid like where where did yeah. they get all their powers yeah. from yeah and we, we uh, so we we recognize yeah exactly so unearned powers so we recognize that you have to in some sense fall into the abyss like you said like go into the underworld yeah um, we, we like seeing that character arc and that character development in in our stories, in our mythology, in in modern fiction. And and when that piece is missing, uh, something it's it's hollow, mm-hmm. you know. But do we hold ourselves up to those same standards? No, not really. <laughs> and uh, that's why it's important to kind of develop uh, some self awareness of this. Mm, is yeah. is um, it's very easy and perhaps i don't know culturally now more than ever in some ways it's easy to not embark upon this journey if you don't want to right um this is a bigger conversation but you might even say that there's a lot of children or or young people or even people our age Mm. who are struggling to become persons yeah um because uh all kinds of reasons but the idea of like the man child mm. is a pretty prevalent idea. Right. You know? And right. W- when, when people talk about someone who is a man child or Peter Pan syndrome. Right. Puer complex. Right. And this, this can, you know, be for women too. Yeah. Puella. There, there's there, both sides of that. Yeah. The eternal child. Yeah. Um, but we do recognize this pattern in our culture of people who are not individuating. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a real struggle for young people to, um, be able to identify the ways in which they're not who they are. Mm. They're not who they're meant to be. Yeah. And what needs to happen to embark upon that great adventure of becoming the individual. Yeah. Yeah. This is the great work. This is what everything is sort of, uh, leading up to or, or what really defines, um, the, the true sort of, uh, transcendence of, of, um, you know, 
the inherent potential into the fully manifested. You know, it's it's walking this path and understanding that you're going to be completely torn apart through the process. And yet through that transformation, you really do come out the other side, having this greater sense of of insight into your own being, of your connection to the world, connection to other people. You understand your your place um, um, among the this greater web of, of humanity. And it transcends then the ego consciousness because it's no longer about the I, you know? It is truly about the collective, the, the, the us in it. All right, so let's try and take a little bit more of a practical, grounded view. What what can we really do with this? What's the shadow work? What kind of exercises might we start to challenge ourselves with? Right, so here's a simple exercise. This isn't going to uh, revolutionize your life, um, but it is something simple that you can do to just kind of start thinking about this, this concept of individuation. Yeah. Get the wheels moving. Right, bring some awareness to your path a little bit. Mm. Um, so you can make a list of the things that you want to achieve within your lifetime. And this sounds kind of cliche, but I think it's useful. Um, anything that you want to do before you die, let's say anything that you consider to be an important achievement for you to do Mm -hmm. with your life, make a list. It doesn't need to be that many things. Um, but you know, partnership, marriage, having children, if you want to buy a house, uh, if you want a certain vocation, mm-hmm. a certain title, uh, if you want to make a bunch of money even or visit someplace or go on some kind of trip or have some kind of experience, whatever you want. Yeah. We're not telling you what your goals have to be. Right. Obviously, I mean, that's a larger conversation. Obviously, we have opinions, but <laughs> any goals that you might have, um, write them out. And uh, once you've written them out, uh, start writing out steps of how you might get there. Mm. And this isn't necessarily to make a real plan and start doing it. That's not, it can be helpful, but this is a mental exercise. I think a big question also is as you begin to write these goals down, these ideals for your life, um, also reflecting on where you are presently in relation to that and where might there be a disconnection where is there a disparity between like maybe what you sense is somewhere you should be going and really how you might be uh, honestly like creating big roadblocks to make that happen? Certainly. So um, once you write out steps of how you might get to where you want to go, they don't need to be totally exhaustive, but just a list of steps of how you might achieve the things that you want. Um, you take a look at your list and there's just things that might stand out to you mm. and it's it's process of externalization same as like journaling same as is writing anything out and putting it out of your mind and onto paper mm-hmm. it forces you to confront yourself yeah and that's why it's useful right so for instance if if you cannot think of any goals if you can't think of any achievements you want to do with your life yeah that's problematic yeah um, I think that's unlikely, mm. probably, for mm. anyone who's listening to yeah. just be like, I have no goals and no achievements I'm looking forward with my life. If that's the case... Um, there might be like the sense of it, right? Like they want that, but then when it comes down to actually writing it, they're, they just don't know how to connect it. And I think that might also be um, a situation that someone might find themselves in. You know, there's like the feeling that you want something more. But what does that actually look like? Mm-hmm. That's where there might be a, an opportunity for you to dig into that missing piece. Well, sure, you could you could you could write out goals or achievements that are more vague. Yeah, it could be a feeling. Yeah, um, you know, the more concrete, the the more accountable you'll right. be to it. But you can you could even write down that um, you want to feel like um, a hero yeah. to the world. You want to make a contribution to the world that actually helps it. Yeah. It's pretty vague, 
but it's still something you could write out. Yeah. Um, but the point is to start kind of confronting mm. the ways in which you are or are not making steps in this right direction. Yeah, walking like the, way, the path. Being avoidant. So um, if you cannot think of any goals, that's problematic. Mm. And it, it's likely that the ego is convinced that that's okay. Mm. But probably a bigger part of you is just avoiding taking responsibility yeah. in some sense. A bigger part of you, the part of you that's unconscious, the part of you that we're saying that you need to get in touch with to yeah. become the individual, to become the person that you're meant to be. Um, you're being avoided for some reason. Right. And this is where the shadow work really comes in because, you know, you either have to understand why you don't really seem to actually know yourself or why you're maybe um, sort of creating narratives in in your mind through the ego that justifies some sort of behavior that really isn't serving you as unhealthy in nature mm -hmm. um, and beginning to understand why that is and sort of breaking that down um, tracing those roots of experience to maybe something else helps you not be limited then by by that shadow content and then you start to find your true self hence the golden shadow right like we've right. got to dive into darkness we need to understand the things that are are not so obvious that aren't in our conscious awareness because mm. there's so much power potential realization that is just waiting there for mm. you if you're having trouble writing out the steps of getting to your goals, let's say you have some goals. Let's say you wrote out some achievements, but you're having trouble writing out steps of how to get there. Mm -hmm. Again, um, it's unlikely that you're going to individuate by accident. Mm -hmm. It's unlikely that you're going to become the person that you're meant to be by accident yeah. unless you are just somehow confronted with some great struggle yes. that just lands yeah. on you. Yeah. That happens. Yes. But if you don't know the steps to get the things you want... Um, it's likely that there's a greater aspect of your being that is being avoidant mm. that doesn't want to confront what it takes to become the person you're meant to be. Right. The same way that the hero might stay in the sheltered existence yeah. and might say, I'm too afraid to leave the castle walls and go confront the dragon. It's too scary. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay in the castle and you stay a child you stay not a person. Yeah. You stay someone who has not um, become a whole, right. complete. Right. Um, and so again, the shadow work there is it's it's important to to really get serious and say, is is there shadow material that's blocking me from walking this path? Mm -hmm. Why am I being avoidant? Yeah. Why am I being afraid? Yeah. At the same time, the sort of flip side of that is like an over identification with um, some sort of very obvious, um, more like persona ideal, which is more like the mask that you wear. So, mm -hmm. you know, your identification to, um, some sort of, uh, career that you've taken on. I am, you know, a nurse that is who I am that defines everything about me, but there's this like it's something stirring inside of you that's really trying to speak to something greater and you're, the the desire to not want to break away from that sort of fusion to something external as well might do that same um it'll do as much damage basically right. as like the running away from the shadow content because right. in some ways you're allowing yourself to be lost in like the external dynamic as well so it's right. important to think of both sides of that over identifying with a persona yes yeah um, Okay, if, if you can think of goals and you can think of steps to get there, if you actually have a list of steps of how you might get there, you have to ask yourself, why aren't you taking those steps? Yeah. Maybe you are taking those steps. Yeah. And if you are, good, you're on the path to becoming an individual. You are individuating mm. if you're taking these steps. It's likely. Mm. You might be wrong about your goals yeah. and you might fail, but you'll find that out. Yeah. And that's part of the individu individuation process right. is this this falling and getting back up yeah. and trying something and failing and realizing you have to go a different path. Mm. So that's part of the process. But again, if you're not taking these steps, if you know what you should be doing and you're not doing it, you have to ask yourself why? Yeah. What is the shadow material here? Right. What, what What is the stuff that's underneath the surface that is causing me to be avoidant? Right. That's causing me to um, have fear. Yeah. Um, am I avoiding struggle? Am I avoiding challenge? Yeah. Am I avoiding confronting 
something that scares me. Mm-hmm. And that could be a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You, maybe you want a better relationship with um, a parent. Mm. And that's part of the individual individuation process yeah, is to repair that relationship. Yes. And you're avoiding it because the parent scares you so much. Right. That could be a thing. And writing out steps of how you might approach your parent. Yeah. That makes you confront what you're not doing. Like I should talk to them about this. Yeah. Maybe I should call them. Why not right now? Right. Why not tomorrow? Yeah. What are you doing that's that's stopping you from doing this? And you have to you have to be honest with yourself and say, maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. And right. that's where the shadow work comes in. Yeah. Um so just recognizing this hero's journey, mm-hmm. right? Recognizing mm-hmm. that the hero is is receives the call to go out into the unknown, to go yeah. out into the chaos. Yeah. And that is how he becomes or she becomes the warrior king or queen. Right. The one that vanquishes the chaos, the one that slays the dragon. Um, that this process of individu- process of individuation is scary and hard. It's something that you will naturally avoid mm. if you just sort of live mindlessly. Yeah. And we all have to confront that yeah. and confront it over and over and over again. Yeah. Because it's a cycle. Yes. It's just, that's life. Yeah, there really isn't any uh, end goal, but it is a, a sort of continuous cycle that renews itself after mm-hmm. some level is reached. Maybe um, by the time you uh, arrive at, at some level of, of an ascension, of some sort of realization, of some sort of integration, then it reveals more. So it's like cycles nested within more cycles it's right. and it and it propels itself ever forward which really hopefully sets you up to constantly be doing this this self work your entire life and that's mm-hmm. not to say you'll always be exhausted and tired and worn out and you know feeling bad about your choices or anything like that but there's always these nuances to discover and as you grow and mature and what what how you sort of um, interpret life changes as you move into um, sort of deeper maturation, then those things should continue to reveal new challenges or insights. And so the individuation process is constant, constantly sort of propelling us forward and just bringing more um, order and wholeness and unity to mm-hmm. our being. And one last piece, if you are being presented with this exercise and you don't want to do it, mm-hmm if you don't actually want to sit down and try this, you could just say you don't have time. Mm. But you also might wonder, are you avoiding something? Yeah. If you really don't even want to get into it, mm. which is true often. It's like you don't even want to do the exercise where you confront yourself. Right. Very common. Yeah. Um, you just don't want to get into it. You don't have the mental energy. There's something about it that you're being, that you're being avoidant towards. Mm. I don't want to confront how I'm failing. Yeah. I don't want to confront how I'm disconnected. Uh, that's why I don't want to go to therapy. Mm. That's why I don't want to have a conversation about what's wrong with me. Mm. That needs to be confronted as well. Yeah. So this is just a simple exercise. It's just to bring awareness to this process of individual uh, process of individuation. That's a tough word. Um, bring awareness to um, who you are, where you're at, and it's just another facet of the shadow work of getting in touch with the part of you that you might not be paying attention to. Yeah. And all of this is a process and every step you take is going to be in the right direction, Mm. whether or not you fail. Yeah. And it's important to keep that in mind. All right. A member of our audience has submitted a dream and I'm going to read it now. My brother was dying in a hospital. I don't actually have a brother. I saw him for a brief time. Then a girl began to chase me. Her hand was made of gold. She could change any object she touched into gold, like King Midas from the Greek myth. It seemed like she just realized that she had this power, and she was shocked. I was afraid that she would change me into gold. Finally, I tricked her into going inside another room, and I managed to escape. I do not know why she was chasing me. This dreamer also provided a little bit of context to the dream. 
Um, she said there were feelings of sadness and fear at moments of this dream, being chased, running for your life, danger. Um, she said the, the environment of the hospital was dark, creepy, run down, decaying. Uh, and she also wanted to add that she's been researching alchemy a little bit. Um, has some interest in the, uh, the Ouroboros, um, some notion of all is one and, uh, gold transmutation, which has some link to individuation. Yeah. This is a really great dream to have during an individuation episode, mm -hmm. because especially from a Jungian analytical perspective, this is like an individuation dream. Right. You it's, know? it's very symbolic. Yes, it's very symbolic. There's some mythological archetypal elements going on. There are some characters who definitely seem to be speaking to the inner dynamics of the dreamer. And um okay, where to start? I'm I'm interested in the brother character, especially mm. because that's not uh, an actual person in the dreamer's life. Right. And so when we think about characters as possible representations of our own inner dynamics, um, of our own sort of um, inner characters, you might say the own our own um, sort of splintered sense of selves. The the brother is an interesting. Um, it's a, that's a part of ourself, right? Like this isn't like a guy who's a friend or a stranger who's a man. A brother is part of your own DNA, right? Your own blood. Your own it, blood. It's definitely we interpret family as being self yeah, in some regard. Yeah. That's like we're tribal like that. Yes. Family is very important. Yes. And that's obviously why siblings are so meaningful yeah. compared to friends. Yes. Yeah, so Not that friends can't become as meaningful as siblings, but certainly, but it's different that just the archetypal nature is different. And so in this case with the dreamer, I'm really, I, I'm curious of what their relationship is right now to this more deeply personal masculine principle. And especially mm. because the, the character in this case in the dream is dead and there is a sense of sadness and loss with the brother um, it's something that needs to be transformed. Usually death in dreams can speak to some sort of aspect of the psyche that's needing transformation or mm. rebirth. So maybe this dreamer is uh, developing some aspect of, of a more masculine principle in their life, which might be something that's moving towards um, more order, structure, uh, development in a more... Um, principled case of uh, maybe something of, of an external nature where they're really trying to bring um, a sense of more of uh, groundedness in their life, authority maybe, stepping into their own personal power. Maybe they're develop, developing a more intellectual nature. Um, diving into alchemy certainly speaks to um, a more like exoteric exploration versus a more like internal, more subtle principle that's usually represented by the feminine. So I would really challenge the streamer first and foremost to think about the representation of the brother. Right. Um, what does it mean? How does it reflect? Yeah. Something going on in her life. Yeah. Some part of who she is. Yeah. Something that might be changing. Yeah. Something that might some, be changing. Something that might be beckoning her to yeah. change. Yeah. Um, there is a masculine feminine thing going on here where, yes. where the brother is dying right and then there's a girl yes chasing her yes and so there is again it's very symbolic yes. it's uh this is, this is a dream that is almost easy to analyze compared to some <laughs> others because of how powerful the symbols are right but, right we, we don't have to know all the personal details because mm -hmm. we could really amplify it into something that's um just more collective in nature mm -hmm. um it, one way to look at um characters that show up in dreams that are of your the same sex might be um, a shadow character so this individual who wrote in um, was a woman as she indicated to us and she's dreaming of some sort of girl figure maybe it's someone who seemed possibly around the same age we don't know for certain but oftentimes you know the the psyche will produce an image a shadow character that is somewhat kind of similar to them mm. and so in that representation especially in these like anxiety tension based streams where you're being chased by something you're often being chased by some sort of uh shadow content within you so it might put the mask on it that sort of represents something that's 
kind of like you, but not quite. It can be sometimes things like a rabid animal or like some sort of monster. It doesn't always have to be a human uh, figure. But in this case, my mind really does go to a shadow figure who has the golden hand. And so there this, there's this dynamic between shadow wanting to bring something into the light of consciousness by chasing the individual. And in this case, often as we deal with with um with shadow the ego doesn't want to face it and so it often manifests in dreams as something that you're running away from something that's causing tension and anxiety right right so um the environment of the hospital as well the environment of the, the hospital decaying mm. being old run yeah. down uh very much an environment of death yes I mean, we already have that association with hospitals. Right. A lot of us don't like going to hospitals because it feels like this place where people go to die, where people are sick. Yeah. Um, and the fact that beyond that, it's falling apart. Mm. So definitely um, change, yeah. transformation, yes. part of you dying, mm -hmm. new part of you being born. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe feelings of anxiety around that. Yeah. Maybe feelings of not wanting to change. Yeah, and there's the interesting dynamic of the shadow character having the golden hand, you know, Midas's golden touch. And that is something for the dreamer to really dive into. But, you know, the shadow ultimately will often bring some element of gold, a.k.a. consciousness, a.k.a. potential power, whatever it might be. Golden shadow. Yeah, golden shadow. Um, so the, sh the shadow character in this case is trying to you know, bring the gold at the same time. If you look at it from the mythological stance with King Midas, his path towards stepping into power came with some really difficult lessons, which was like literally everything he touched turned to gold. He couldn't mm. eat anything yeah. in some um, versions. He touches his daughter, she turns into a golden statue. So I think that there is some reflection here of like what the individual is really grappling with and how they might be maybe possibly stepping into deeper truth and realization, but at the same time, what is the dynamic between um, anything that needs to transform that's really not serving you? Um, so that's something to be considered with the dream symbolism. What's interesting is she mentions that the girl who has the golden hand is shocked at her own powers. Yeah, yeah. She's surprised <laughs> at what she can do. Yeah. And there is this feeling of potential yes. of perhaps what, what you could become mm. again, that sort of transformational idea, the alchemical idea, yes. be turning into gold. Yes. Um, being chased by the person who's going to turn you into gold right. and that person being shocked by their own power, mm. fear of, um, fear of your own power right. in some sense, fear of responsibility. Um, the idea that you could become something, the individuation process you could become something right. and you're terrified in some in some sense of what that could be. Well, right. E ego is terrified of that because it's going to force it to transform mm -hmm. and it's going to force it to shake up what is the current homeostasis and develop um, some new normal. And so in that way, especially if this is connecting to, to the sort of like King Midas mythology, we can think that there's a perception that the gold that's coming up is actually... Uh, negative in some way that right. it's it's not going to serve you thus you must run away but truly that's that's probably not the case here right and think of how much good you could do how much power you would have if you could turn things to gold yeah and that's the Midas myth is like this power all right. this like amazing fortune at my fingertips yeah and it becomes something that he cannot wield right and it yes, backfires yes yeah so that yeah, that you have fear to learn the of balance. power that fear yeah. of responsibility of like you have the power to do great good but you also have this power to mess up completely and, yeah. and do great bad and shine away from that people don't want responsibility people don't want to have to make choices they don't want to have to um take ownership over their mm. own existence. Yes. And I think that that brings me to the point of the individual trapping that figure mm. in another room. So she's running away from the shadow figure with the golden hand and she's able to trick that individual into, you know, going into a place and she's able to like run away. And, and to me, it's like, well, the work continues because it, this to me is playing out to that in some ways you're trying to circumvent 
what is happening here. And that's natural. That's to be expected in shadow work and in individuation work. You're like resisting it to some degree. But the question really is how can you open yourself up more to it? How can you understand the dynamic and the transformation that's happening and how that can really help you take um, that next step towards, towards that realization? Do you have a question for us? Do you have a dream you'd like us to analyze? Is there a topic you'd like us to cover? We want to hear from you. Contact us through a submission form, which can be found at our Instagram page at Golden Shadow Podcast. Or if you're listening on YouTube, you can find the link in the description down below. Thanks for listening. See you later. If you find this podcast useful, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash golden shadow podcast. Thank you.